Hey, ready? Let's do this. Let's go through the Spark Thrift Server setup that follows this tutorial. And um, I'm just hoping that me running through this might help clarify some of the steps that it takes to get Spark Thrift Server up and running and pointing it and using it with Cassandra. So I'm going to go through the steps and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, for and also I should tell you, so I'm looking at my screen here and occasionally I'll look back at you, but for now I'm going to look at the screen and run through it. So let's start off by um, making, let's download CDM. Um, and you can see up here on my screen that I've got it up on the GitHub site. I'm just going to download the binary. You can see it down here, and that's going to be in my downloads directory, which I have all teed up for you now. I'm going to chmod it to make it executable. I'm going to do a node tool status to make sure that Cassandra is running locally. And then I'm going to do, is it CDM install killer weather? CDM not found, huh? Let's try it. It should be in my path. Why? There we go. So I guess I need to put it in my path. So this is running. Um, and this is going to take about a minute or so. So while that's running, let's go through the remaining other steps in it. Um, I'm not going to set up uh, Spark Master and Spark Worker locally as described in this tutorial it's optional so i'm just going to go straight to setting up spark thrift server so i'm going to open up another tab another iterm tab here and start that up um i think i have this in my history so i am going to be lazy and just go back in the history and you can see here that i'm going to call the start thrifters thrift server shell script i'm also going to pass in the package for the spark cassandra connector and the comp for where cassandra's running and we know that's running locally so here we go that should start up and put, tell me where it is logging and we're running so now let's start a beeline and connect I'm gonna again I'm gonna go back in history here because I've already got that ready to go for you so I'm gonna call connect as I'm showing here. I'm just gonna disregard the username and password. I don't have that configured, so I should be good. You may have seen as I was scrolling through the history that I've already set up some of the tables as described in the tutorial, like weather station and as well as raw data. We can do a quick sanity test here or a smoke test, if you will, to make sure that we're able to read from Cassandra at this point, so let's do a select that's good we can show tables we should see our two I have an old one in there called Jojo as well so we've got raw weather data and we've got weather station we're calling that from Apache B line so I think that's through step either four or five in the tutorial we're just rolling right along here um, so now we have got what have we got? We've got it Cassandra running. We've got data loaded. We've got the thrift server started running in local mode. We've got the meta store, the hive meta store updated to point to the couple of tables in Cassandra. And we've proven that we're speaking or what appears to be speaking to Cassandra through thrift server. Let's set, let's keep going. Huh? Let's set up, let, let's run squirrel and run some more queries. Um, as noted in the tutorial, I'm not going to go through setting all this up. Um, I've got a, li a link to a site that will walk you right through it, setting it all up. So um, I'm not going to set up Squirrel, um, but I am going to run some queries for us. So we've got Squirrel up. I connected. We've got a query window here. Let's show an example from the tutorial. I'm going to cut and paste. I'm going to paste in the first one here, which is has a join between the two tables, and let's execute that. And voila, we've got results. Holy moly. 
we are rolling. So let's do something a little bit more complicated as shown in the tutorial. I'm also going to cut and paste that from the site. Let's delete that. And let's calculate the weather stations and their highest average temperature on a daily basis. Let's see what we got. Do, 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 do. Ah! We got it. So here we go. We've got, I think it's LaGuardia Airport and San Francisco International. SFO. So we are working. We're running through Thrift Server, but let's actually prove it. Let's bring up the you want to you want to seeing is believing right so let's bring up um, a browser and let's go to 4040 on localhost because we're running in local mode you'll see that we get redirected here and I want you to just call out a couple of things and then I'm gonna leave it up to you to run through these steps and play around with it a little bit more so you can see now we're in the jobs tab of the spark UI we're running locally and we can see some things like the queries we just ran. We can see how many tasks that took for the last one. We had three stages. And this is all just should be familiar Spark UI to us at this point. We can also notice this new tab, this JDBC and ODBC server tab, which is interesting. Well, I think kind of interesting because you can see the, the query plan here. Do you see it in the lower right hand um, portion of my screen? And we can see some of the, the aspects of the queries we just ran. So cool, huh? We can see some of the stages that we've gone through. We can see the DAG visualization. We can see if we've shuffled, yada, yada. You know, all the regular Spark UI stuff. We can see that we are not caching anything at the moment. And here's some of the SQL and the, the, the queries we ran as well. So I'll leave that up to you. Um, but in sum, we've just gone through setting up Spark Thrift Server, connecting it to Cassandra, and running a couple queries. Hopefully you found this helpful. If there's anything that's not exactly clear, just go ahead and leave a comment wherever you're watching this video, and I'll be happy to try to help when I can. Have a good one. See you later.